So worksheet number five, six, and seven. Let's see. So we're going to start with female reproductive organs, right? This is where we left. Okay. Yes. All right, yo. So female reproductive organs. Okay. So what are some female internal accessory organs? Okay. You, there's only like three. You know, you have your uterus, the uterine tubes, and the vagina. And the uterine tubes um, come from the ovary to the uterus. So, but these are accessory, so they're not uh, primary. The primary ones in the female would be the, what? Ovaries. Oh, mm -hmm. Ovaries, yep. Um, so the uterine tubes can be called three different things, um, fallopian tubes or oviducts. Typically, though, you'll see uterine tubes and fallopian tubes a little bit more often. So if you see tube or duct, that's what it's referring to. Um, and within these tubes and ducts, this is where a, and I'm going to pull up the picture really fast. Um, see, this is the egg right here. This is the ovary. This is your uterine tube. Typically, an egg will, come on, an egg will flow out of the ovary and just kind of stay in the uterine tube. And then you can see here, I just need to see where they are. So this is how it is. You know, sperm is over here. Um, this is like when you ovulate, it's just going to wait over there. And then once the sperm attached to it and it gets fertilized, the egg will then uh, transform and then implant in the uterus. So that's kind of how it works. And that's why the uterine tubes are important. And something else also is that it's really important for the egg to travel to the uterus because if the baby's developing the fallopian tubes, um, that's not good. <laughs> the child, that, that's a very complicated pregnancy. But anyway, um, within the uterine tubes, there's fimbriae, which is kind of like a... Uh, kind of like a texture or like finger-like projections that kind of hold on to the egg and wait for the egg to be fertilized. So if you see the word fimbriae, just know what's in the uterine tubes. Um, as far as fertilization goes, you know, since we're talking about the tubes and fertilization, it has to happen within 12 to 24 hours. And if that doesn't happen, then the egg will die. And if the egg isn't fertilized within 12 to 24 hours, egg dies, then you have your period because it's trying to get rid of all that. And we'll go over menstrual cycle, so this will make more sense. But this is why you know you, you bleed, is because your body prepares the uterus to become vascularized, prepares nutrients. So if there was a baby, then it could live. But um, if it's not fertilized, then the egg dies. Um, the uterus is what nourishes the embryo, not the uterine tubes. Kind of like that picture I just pulled up, you can see the embryo will be nourished in the uterus. Another thing too is, so like in anatomy, we learned about bones and we, 101, and we learned about cervical bones. Okay, and I know I'm not the only one that thought this, but when I was in 101, I thought um, cervical meant cervix. You know, and that's the area down in your uterus. But the thing is, see, I was thinking about oh, massage day. Um, this is your cervix right here, this area. And the thing is, though, this is called the cervix because cervical means neck. And the cervix is the neck of the uterus, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I don't, so I thought that was kind of neat when I was like, oh, neck of the uterus. That makes much more sense. So, because I was thinking the bones down in your cervix, that's cervical region. So, that's that. Um, I don't know how much of this he'll ask or anything, but this was kind of in your book. Um, and basically, there are three sections of the uterine tubes, um, you know, cells in the uterine tubes and the layers of the uterine wall. So, three sections of the tubes are the infundibulum, ampulla, and isthmus. Just if you see this in your textbook. This is what it is. Um, the walls of the uterine tubes have different kinds of cells. You have simple ciliated columnar epithelial. And these cells, um, ciliated, right, cilia. So it will move the egg toward the uterus because it's the direction it wants it to go. There's mucus-secreting cells that uh, lubricate the ovum. 
just to keep it, the egg moving. And then there's layer of smooth muscle that kind of, you know, like how peristalsis moves, moves a stool. Well, um, layers of smooth muscle transport the ovum, which is, which is the egg. So that's, that's some of those layer, um, cells. And then layers of the uterine tube is pretty much layers and everything else. You have your endometrium, your myometrium, and your perimetrium, which is your inner mucosa. Myometrium is your muscle, and then perimetrium is the outer serosa. So. Um, the next portion, we're going to talk about the vagina. And there's three functions, three structures, and three layers. So the three functions, so the very bottom here, um, the vagina receives sperm for fertilization. It then transports uterine secretions outside the body, and a uterine secretion would be like, um, like, like blood on a period. And then the vagina is also responsible for transporting the baby outside the body. So pretty, pretty obvious things. Um, three structures is the orifice, which is basically the opening that counts as a structure, um, called the orifice, and then the fornices, uh, which people can palpate for internal organs, and then you, could, that's, you can also have to do surgery. I don't quite know where those are, but um, if you see a picture in your book, <laughs> like I said, this, this I don't even have memorized because I don't think it's super, super important, but it's there. And then there's also the hymen, and the hymen is a membrane of connective tissue. Uh, that kind of covers the vaginal opening, and typically people who are virgins who have never had sex, um, their hymen will still be intact, but if someone has, then their hymen will be broken, but it's not like a big deal. It's just, yeah. it's, it's just what it is. <laughs> not really exciting. Um, another name of female external reproductive organs. So we just talked about internal ones, which was like, you know, your ovaries, your OB ducts and your uterus, same the vagina, those are internal ones. Um, but the external reproductive organs are known as the valva or vulva. And this is like the stuff that you can see just without any, like on email. Um, the, yeah, right, let me turn the volume down. Um, so you have your labia majora, labia minora, the clitoris, the vestibule, vestibule and the vestibular glands. Um, so the labia is basically the folds, and they just kind of function to protect the vagina from any like bacteria or anything. It's like a barrier. Um, the clitoris is kind of like the penis in that it actually erects, and it's where a lot of pleasure feelings are felt from. Then the vestibule is basically a space, and the vestibular glands are glands that you know secrete fluids to moisturize and lubricate because. I mean, who wants to do anything dry? I mean, that, yeah. that, doesn't, sound, that doesn't sound great. Um, so there are three different main processes and just label which ones are which. So orgasm in the female, like in the male, is a pleasure feeling. It's a physiologic and psychologic release. Um, when a female orgasms, there's rhythmic contractions of the perineum, the uterus and the uterine tubes. And these, this contraction, um, these contractions work to push sperm up so then it can make contact with the egg. So that's why there's those contractions. And that's, it aids in sperm transport. That's the point of an orgasm. But then it feels really good, so you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> lubrication is a process that utilizes vestibular glands, um, uses mucus, and it aids in intercourse, right? Because dry is not good. Um, and then the erection, the females do erect, and this happens with tissues in the clitoris. Um, the clitoris also utilizes nitric oxide, and um, it also causes the vagina to actually dilate, expand, and elongate. So, which I think is kind of cool, because typically, you know, with males, you know that they erect, but with females, the vagina actually gets bigger. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of interesting, really, because it has a function, you know, shape, you know, structure defines functions, so that's, that's what it is. It wants to make babies, so there you go. Um, sexual stimulation utilizes the parasympathetic impulses. This is true. You would think sympathetic, because sympathetic you think excited, but it's actually parasympathetic. So that concludes.
female reproductive organs. We're then going to jump into female hormonal control and memory glands. So I'm going to zoom out. Do you have any questions on any of that? No. It's pretty overview. Yeah. Um, so on the uh, right side, these are all definitions. But if you look over here, this is the process of which hormones are released. Does this kind of make sense? Yeah. Okay. This is the first time I kind of tried doing something in combination. Um, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So the hypothalamus, first things first, will release gonadotropin releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary gland. Gonadotropin releasing hormone, um, so gonad means sex organ, gonado. Um, and this is a cyclic release that is based on the menstru menstrual cycle in the female. You know, we're talking about female, female hormones, not male. And it stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to secrete follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone is primarily known to um, control the growth of eggs. You know, the follicle, egg, egg, whenever you hear the word follicle, you're going to think sex cell. In a male, it's a sperm. In the female, it's the egg. So follicle stimulating hormone is going to stimulate the egg. Uh, luteinizing hormone, and we'll go through this when we go through menstrual cycle. Um, luteinizing hormone is utilized in ovulation and the production of estrogen. So it's the hormonal hormone. That makes sense. So if you can kind of separate those two. Um, so follicle stimulating hormone causes the ovarian, there we go, ovarian follicle or the egg to mature. And this happens from puberty to menopause. Luteinizing hormone uh, causes ovulation and the formation of the corpus luteum. We'll, figure, we'll, we'll discover what the corpus luteum is here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, the corpus luteum is a, becomes a temporary endocrine structure that's alive when the egg's alive, but it dies when the egg dies. So it's so just keep that in mind. Um, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone will then go to the ovaries, the adrenal cortices, and the placenta well, when, when someone's pregnant. Um, so estrogen, I like to think about estrogen right here at the E, and endometrium. The endometrium is basically the tissues inside of the uterus. So this is your uterus. Um, Let's see. So this is the ovary. This is the ovarian. Um, ovarian <laughs> fallopian tubes. Ovarian. Yeah, yeah. This is your uterus, and this is your uterus right here. Okay. So estrogen functions to make tissue develop. It makes this thicker, the, the endometrium. The endometrium is like this, the skin of the uterus. Um, and the way, the way I kind of think about it is, you know, if, you're gonna have, if you, your, ba your body's getting ready to be pregnant, you know, you don't want the membrane around the baby to be too um, thin. thin. Yeah, you don't want it to be thin. You want it to be thick so it can support the baby. Um, progesterone is really important for vascularizing. So this increases blood flow. And if I had a red, I don't think I have a red marker. Yeah, I do. So progesterone functions to just bring all this blood here. And the reason why blood is vascularized, you know, it builds vessels, increases blood flow, is for both nutrients and oxygen. So that's why blood is important. Um, and then there, oh, another thing too about estrogen. Um, it develops a se female secondary sex characteristics, so like um, breasts and uh, uh, fat distribution. Yeah. And I was like, there's another one. And it also enlarges female um, accessory reproductive organs. So whenever you think estrogen, you're going to think growth and maturation. Extra. Extra. Yeah, extra. Extra. Yeah, extra fat, estrogen. And that's something actually interesting is estrogen is actually stored in fat. Yeah, lucky us. 
Um, and that's actually why I said this in the last session, but you know, when a female is, um, you know, there's a lot of seven year olds going through puberty when they're like nine, not I said seven, but when they're like nine, it's because they have all this extra estrogen from their diet. Um, and that estrogen, estrogen that triggers them to go into puberty is coming from their excess fat. You know, our bodies are programmed that when we have a certain amount of fat distribution, they're more ready to have babies. But because our diets are so awful, um, you know, you get little chunky kids and they're starting their periods earlier because the estrogen is stored in their fat and their fat cells secrete the estrogen and the body thinks, oh, you're ready to have a baby. And that's not the case. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. So, but I like what you said, estrogen extra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, okay, so progesterone vascularizes, increases blood flow. Um, st progesterone stimulates uterine changes during the reproductive cycle. So this is like when um, you have your period. So with progesterone, I like to think, um, progesterone, period, pain, pregnancy. <laughs> All peas. Yeah. So progesterone is responsible for um, all these things. And the thing about w about with pregnancy is some women, um, for a while, they may not be able to like carry a child. Like you'll hear that, but it's just because they don't produce enough progesterone. So they don't. So if you don't have enough progesterone, you don't have enough blood flow. And if you don't have enough blood flow, then that child won't be carried. So that's the idea behind that. Um, Next we have our, is androgens, and androgens, andro, actually in Greek means man. Um, so if you think about that, it in that way, you know, you have pubic, which is, you know, the private parts, and then axillary, which is your armpit, you know, you have hair growth there. So androgen, think about, you know, man. <laughs> men, ha men are hairy. And then in low concentrations, um, it forms the female body type. But if in high concentrations, it forms the male body type. Oh, so we're yeah, we're low concentration, yeah. But then you see some females who are like built like men, and it's like, whoa, like, you know, I think, <laughs> how much, you know, how much androgen do you got? You know what I mean? So um, that's pretty neat. There's more of this that you can look into. Uh, yeah, so progesterone. Again, prepping, pregnancy, placenta, there's the other one, period, pain, periods of pregnancy, pain, you know, that's nice. <laughs> um, so mammary glands, something cool about them um, is that they're known as modified sweat glands. So they're sweat glands, but they produce milk. Yeah, I don't know, yeah, it's kind of neat. Um, and these, and this is just alveolar glands to alveolar ducts to lactose to furous ducts. This is just the process of, you know, if you were to trace a drop of milk going through the boob or the breast. Um, and then ovarian hormones are what stimulate glandular development in females. So when the ovaries develop, then the glands will develop because the ovaries will then be secreting hormones. Yeah. Um, next portion of it, since we're talking about hormones, let's talk about contraception. <laughs> Um, so there's a various various methods you can use, but somehow we're still having babies. Some, <laughs> but really, it's because they're not really effective. Um, for the most, I mean, the, the most effective is like abstinence, but then that's not really realistic. So, you know, um, so mechanical barriers. This includes like the condom, diaphragm, uh, cervical cap, and mechanical barriers are just that. They're barriers. They just prevent sperm from getting. Um, into the female reproductive tract. Uh, mechanical barriers are most effective when they're used with spermicides. And um, spermicides are just like creams or jellies or something that just kills sperm. They're like chemicals that you can put on it, I guess. Um, coitus interruptus. Um, so you can see the word interrupt in there. And then this is just basically, you know, when there are people, you know, who are like having sex and the male just withdraws the penis and it, doesn't ejaculate, so the female. That's, you know, it just, it's just, in, you interrupt it so they can go do their thing. But however, this is, this is known as to be not effective. 
as a birth control method because um, sometimes you can have some sperm in the male reproductive tract, so he doesn't have to ejaculate to actually impregnate. You know what I mean? Because there might be a little bit left or hanging in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Um, rhythm method. This is when some females can uh, abstain from, or they don't have sex for two days before and one day after ovulation. This is known to be not effective because female hormones are everywhere and you can't predict when you're going to ovulate when you're not ovulating. So, um, uh, Chemical barriers and plus some people who try to do rhythm method. I mean, when people want sex, they want, they want it now, <laughs> you know. It's not something, oh, well, let's wait a couple days for me to ovulate, you know. Um, so chemical barriers, typically used with mechanical barriers, jellies, foams, creams, um, these are like the spermicides. Um, other hormonal contraceptives include intramuscular um, medrooxyprogesterone acetate, um, and this protects against pregnancy for three months. It prevents, uh, yeah. Oh, you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. And um, it just prevents the maturation and releases secondary oocytes. So then it just it just um, suppresses uh, suppresses follicle stimulating hormone. I can't think of the book. Um, and I don't know. I'm just like talking because it's so boring. Um, intrauterine device. These interfere with fertilization and implantation of blastocytes by inflaming the tissue. So it inflames the tissue, um, and this just prevents the egg from attaching. And um, it's, I think there's the myurina. It's kind of basically the intrauterine devices are kind of T-shaped, and they sit in the uterus kind of like somewhere. And then they have a little... Um, a little string, so then like you can pull it out, and it's really easy to pull out too. Um, yeah, because it's it, this part folds up, and so even they have something in you, you can fold. It can fold. Um, next, we have combined hormonal contraceptives, and this is just basically when females just take hormones to offset their uh, reproductive abilities. Um, it disrupts normal follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone by administering estrogen and progesterone. So if you have, if you have a lot of progesterone, um, you're not going to produce luteinizing hormone. If you have a lot of estrogen, it's, if you have a lot of estrogen, I think that also, yeah, I think estrogen also suppresses luteinizing hormone. So, yeah, it's kind of nice. So you just take estrogen and progesterone. Um, it also thickens cervical mucus to prevent sperm passage. So if you have, you know, the cervical mucus is thickened, then the sperm can't get past it. So it's kind of like a second thing. But I know some people that are like, the pill doesn't work. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> um, and now since we, we just talked about how to prevent having babies, another contraceptive method that is permanent uh, is like when you get your tubes tied. Males, they get vasectomies. And vasectomy, you can see V-A-S, this is when their vas deferens are cut and tied. And this prevents sperm from being added to the semen. So it's not a big deal. I mean, their tract is still there, it's just cut. Um, and females, okay, so we have um, oviducts or tubes. This is what we're talking about. We have tubal ligation. And this is when the uterine tubes is cut and tied, and this prevents the egg from passing to the uterus. So, you know, if you're cut and tied here, the egg is implants here, and it can't pass through, you can't get pregnant. Um, however, with both methods, you know, you have to be 100% sure you don't want to have kids to have this done, because it's permanent. Um, but for some people, you know, it's because our bodies, <laughs> yeah, well, it's not reversible if it works. <laughs> for some people, you know, they have it cut, and then this fuses back together. <laughs> And then they have a baby. <laughs> so, I mean, some, most of the time, if it, you know, if it doesn't fuse, it works. But, uh, or it works in preventing. But if it doesn't work, it's because something, your body did something. <laughs> yeah, so imagine that. Oh, no. <laughs> 
All right, so the next portion we're going to talk about, actually I'm gonna do this in another video.